Hello, anybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy's Conquest. I am Mr. Debius, or just Deeb. And in the last episode, we went through halfway through Crocodile Cauldron. And in this episode, I'm starting off with the save screen to show you that we are already at 22% of our game completed. 18 creme coins and a few things. Uh, it's weird for me to be starting in here at Kong College. I had to do myself some math and some good exam on the left. Great exam. Kremlings can't do math. So that takes care of that. I don't know why Kong College is situated in the crow's nest of a lava ship, of a pirate ship sinking in lava, but enough deliberating on that information. We're going on to Red Hot Ride. Last two levels in this, in this world. Now it is going to be worth it mentioning to say that as these worlds get, as we get further in the game, the levels are going to get longer and I won't be able to do as, or at least I shouldn't do as many levels per episode, so that's probably going to be a thing that happens. Like, even that last episode kind of got a little bit long. I think it did anyway. I haven't edited it yet. And oh god, oh god, everything's bad. So that's the gimmick of this level, red hot balloons, or not, well, blue hot balloons, I guess you could say, and we're going to ride them all the way to their end. Oh, this is going to be fantastic with this wonky controller, but I think I got it. With the ducking and the moving and the... So you can steer them with left and right, and don't jump or else you'll die. And this was a bad idea. Everything is terrible now. So yeah, we're back to our, actually, this is the second lava level in the game. After we had a lava level, a mine shaft level, then a ship hold level again. Now these yellow clobbers, as you might have seen, will knock the bananas right out of you, and they're kind of jerks about it. You can't also charge on this thing. You can try, but it doesn't do anything. Now the great thing about having rhinos is that rhinos kill bees. They are natural enemies in the na 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 nature's kingdom. Thankfully, you can also let the balloon sink in the lava a little bit and it won't hurt you because this is one of those games where it's not the lava that hurts you so much as it's uh, bottom falling off the screen that kills you. So there's that and you can just kind of take advantage of that platformers thing. It's kind of like Mario 1 as opposed to Mario 3 where the lava was the thing that actually killed you as opposed to just falling off the screen. And lava was just a flavorful texture like it is here. I mean, it kind of has to be for what we're doing in here. All these animals just hanging out around these volcanoes and not immediately dying. Oh yeah, moonwalking balloon. That makes no sense. So the reason we got Rambi is actually for this wall right here. Because it'll take us right into a bonus room where we have to destroy them all. My favorite. So in this room, we have a couple of clumps. These enemies are actually, I said they were common in the, in the first episode or something, but they're not. Even though like, they're the most simple mook in the game, they do they rarely appear compared to other enemies in the game. And it's kind of a shame because I really like their design. I really like their whole concept of a peg leg Kremlin. I almost said Koopa, but they're not Koopas, even though they both start with K and they're kind of there. And you see that banana down there, don't you? And you wonder, how do I get down there? We're gonna throw Diddy into the lava. He will bounce back and be like, what the hell, Dixie? What was that about? Moonwalking Balloon. Into bonus, collect the stars. So here we ride these balloons all around and some of these collect the stars. The collect the stars are always kind of paced out a little bit so that they might seem like you don't have enough time, but you in reality have more than enough time at the pace that you collect stars at. And if you do that, that kind of takes care of that. Goodbye, Balloon. You have been useful, but we are leaving. And I think I just got the checkpoint for the second time, even though I haven't really needed to get it. Oh boy, this is going to be tricky. Or not really. We're fine. Don't worry, everybody. I'm fine. So I'm not sure if this is the only time in the game we'll see the Balloon gimmick. We might see it again later. And... Oh, just a moment. Already, I am back. Now that I have taken care of some dangerous secret business. I will not tell you what it is. Also, you might be wondering what's with those bees there, and... Well, the answer is you have to throw TNT at them, I think. But you also need the TNT, I think, for something else? Oh, no! Problem is, I took off my headset, and I don't know if it's in a good position or not, or if it's gonna sound like crap now, but... So it goes. If you aim your TNT barrel just right, you'll be able to take out two of those zingers. Zingers! And you'll give them a zinger. What? 
So there's a lot of clobbers in these levels, and I'm not sure why. I mean, if you were in a giant hot volcano, I mean, what's the best way to cool off but to hide inside of a inside of a barrel? I think. Are barrels flammable? This seems like a terrible idea. So the level, of course, is gonna start challenging you with like just spawning balloons where over these not heat these. What would you call these? These updrafts? These these geysers, which are kind of inconsistent. Why are they only appearing over specific spots of lava? Um, if you are a person who is an expert in lavaology, please tell me why that might be. Cog! We're going to be seeing that a lot throughout the game, I have a feeling. And duck! And we get under the zingers. And we're about ready to go through to the end of the level. I think we're pretty damn close, and in any case. And we got ourselves a thing up here. Also, I think I missed the... DK coin again. Bees. You know, I'll bet dollars to donuts. I know where it is too. I bet it is above those bees where there's that one TNT barrel ahead of them, and you kind of have to. And there goes my barrel. Thanks a lot, flitter. I bet it's up there, above that N. I'm gonna get it. Yep. And we got ourselves the DK coin, and not finishing the level! Because screw that. Hey, Cranky. Bye, Cranky. So that brings us up to the last level of Crocodile Cauldron. Crocodile Cauldron. Squawks sh Squawks's Shaft. I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that name at all. Why did they spell it like that? What is, what are you doing, Rare? So I just introduced us to a new enemy by completely killing it. And that is a crook. Crooks are jerks. Crooks have hooks, and they will throw their hooks at you. They will crook it towards you, and then you will be sad. And we got a bunch of clomps just having a clomp party up here. No clomp party for you. Also, we're in another mineshaft level, and mineshaft levels are fun, and I already kind of got excited about them and said, ooh, I love these levels and their music. Now, there is one thing I will kind of give Donkey Kong Country over Donkey Kong Country 2 in its level aesthetic designs, is that even though Donkey Kong Country Donkey Kong Country, at least with Jungle Japes, the main level archetype, it did like a lot more with its palette and played around a lot more with that. Whereas Donkey Kong Country 2 just kind of used the same palette for most of the levels in the game anywhere. Like this looks pretty much identical to the other mineshaft area we did. And I don't really appreciate that so much. Find the token. We have to get past the bees to get ourselves a token. Now why are they so obsessed with these things? And here we have a redoing of the Red Zinger puzzle from puzzle. Oh god. Oh, this is bad. Oh no. I'm not gonna be able to do this. Am I? There we go. I think it's always in the same treasure chest every time and it's positioned in such a way that you will have, you'll probably get to it towards the end. By the way, I don't think if I, I showed that, that you can do that to enemies where you can just kind of fly through them. D Dixie Kong and Diddy, all, they both have a sideways attack. Donkey Kong never had that, interestingly. He did not have an attack like that. And Diddy Kong has a cartwheel. And there's a crook, and he's protecting this treasure chest, but we want that treasure chest. But you have to get this just right and get yourselves that treasure chest. And there is clearly something over there, and I have nothing to break open this chest on, so goodbye. Goodbye to everything. Well, that wasn't fun. Now, if you see these barrels above you, and you want to throw up the monkey that's supposed to go in it, and from that we get a bunch of coins. And now we are rich. We have 25 coins. This will be sad if I reset the game, and then I only have zero coins, because the game does reset your coins and lives if you restart the game, and that's kind of a bummer, really. And like I said, if the game becomes really hard if you play the, if you play it with breaks, and that's kind of unfair. This was a bad idea but a safe idea, if I do say so myself. Hmm? No, that was a dumb idea, but Mineshaft levels, as much as I, I like them, I like their music more than the actual levels. The music kind of saves these levels for me. They, it always feels like I kind of have to throw myself to the sides to see if something is hiding in the wings, and I don't always like, I don't really like games that rely on leaps of faith to hide things, and I like Donkey Kong, Con Don 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 Donkey Kong Country usually gets around that fairly well with its tells and its hidden things just barely in the corner of your eye. 
that you can see if you're attentive enough. And I am almost out of tea, and that makes me sad. Anyway, we got ourselves our Find the Token mission, in which we just play around with barrels. And barrels have always been a staple of the Donkey Kong Country series. I don't really feel like I need to say that, but I do. Another thing about this game is that Donkey Kong Country had these long barrel sections where you had to ride in the barrels from shooting barrel to barrel, and if you failed, you died. And Diddy Kong Country did not Diddy Kong Country. Well, it may as well be that because it's Donkey Kong Country, but where is Donkey Kong but kidnapped in his own game? And I'm going to be talking about this in a moment. And those barrel puzzles, those long barrel sequences, we haven't seen any of those, but we might. In the meantime, we are going to be checking out a new animal buddy. This is Squawks. He can spit eggs. I know you might think they're like coconuts or nuts or something, but those are eggs. Zoom in on it. It's like a little yellow round thing with red spots. That is definitely an egg. Squawks had a lot of eggs. Squawks likes omelets. Now here, you just... Here is the fun of a vertical section. And now you have a projectile attack, and I really like Squawks, but... You can also hurt yourself if your down button is... I'm not, I'm not going to bring that up anymore. This is the last time I'm going to mention the down button on my controller because I know it might sound like I'm complaining about my controller, and I don't want to be one of those players who always blames everything on my controller. Even though I mentioned that from the get-go, I don't want to be one of those. So I'm going to... I apologize, and I will stop. Now, when you have two of these guys, you kind of want to duck out of range and then take care of them. And if you go over this way, they are hiding a secret. This is actually one of those ones that's really hard to find if you don't know where to look. And there's both a DK coin and a bonus barrel. The best way to find this is to talk to Cranky, actually. Like I said, Cranky is good in this game for telling you where to find things if they are, you know, elusive enough. He's a lot more helpful than he was in the first game anyway. He says something like, the crook guards something. And that's the crook that guards something. So with our parrot, we will now kill all of these bees. Bees! Zingers. Those are some pretty mean-looking wasps, anyway. And that takes care of that. Those, there will be more Animal Buddy sections, and they will get a lot harder. A lot harder. A lot harder. Be careful coming down, though, because the enemies respawn. And they will, they will kill you. And I think you have to go all the way down here, unfortunately, and bring yourself back over here. And because the enemies respawn, be ready for that. And we got a couple of Neckies. If you just stop floating up as they're about to dive and just shoot in their direction they're swooping down to, they're pretty easy to get to. Now one of the things that most I, th I think most people don't figure out right away is that if you hold up and then flap your wings, you'll, flap, you'll fly up faster than just by pressing the fly up button. And if you hold down, you'll fly down faster. So that that is appreciate, appreciated, or it'll slow your flying speed up. So that's nice. And holding down will just kind of make you drop otherwise. And so with that, we got ourselves that. I know, it's exciting. And I think I got everything in the level, but I guess we're going to see. Damn it! No Kong for me. And is that everything in the level? We got everything? I think the world is completely cleared out. And with that, we are moving on to the Skull Flaming Boss, Cleaver's Kiln. My, probably one of my favorite bosses in the entire game. Because it is a flaming sword. Cleaver is just an awesome concept. And he was also, he's pretty damn intimidating if you just look at him. And look, look at his handle. There is a burning hand holding him. There is somebody in immense pain down there. And is that Cleaver? Or what's going on with this guy? What the heck? I'm sorry. So yeah, you want to time between these fireballs and jump over them just right. And, you know, when you throw cannonballs against swords, it's not good for the quality of the metal. It's just not good. And you want to, you want to get the rhythm right. You want to just... Well, you don't want to do that. You want to wait until he stops flinging back. Until he stops, um reaching back. And once you hit him three times, that's it. Back to the squad stat squadus quo. Goodbye, Cleaver. We hardly knew ye. And he comes back! Turns out that he was the sword all along and not the hand holding the sword. And that is actually one of the most in uh, intimidating, effective attacks in the game if you don't know to jump. Because this is your first time doing this. There's some coins up there. Coins tend to be hidden in boss battles. And when you hit him like this, oh god. This is terrifying, actually. This this scared the crap out of me when I was younger. 
and it it really did catches you off guard how he just comes flying at you and he's an aggressive boss and he has a really cool design and I just think he's a really cool boss and I really like him but unfortunately goodbye cleaver oh god well that's gonna be burned into my brain for the rest of my life And that takes care of Crocodile Cauldron. We got all the things in there. We got the exclamation mark and the DK coin. So that takes care of that. That part is complete. We move out of the fiery base of Crocodile Isle and in the and we are finished with that. So in the next episode, we are actually gonna be moving on to Crocodile Isle proper. We haven't even gotten to the main heart of this island yet. We haven't gotten to the main content, the main bulk. We've just getting past the entrance. But in the next episode, we will be getting to the Swampy Creme Quay. So if you want to see that, then I just hope to see somebody in the next one. Bye bye